you go to a conference or workshop, you become motivated and inspired. You can't wait to get back to your home unit to apply your new learnings and insights. But by the time you return, you slip right back into your normal actions and routine. Despite your best intentions, no change ever really occurs. Sound familiar? Today, finally, we can do something to prevent this all too familiar immunity to change syndrome. Organizers of the National Managing the Unexpected and Prescribed Fire and Fire Use Operations Workshop that focused on high reliability organizing proved it. After three full, stimulating days of absorbing and discussing high reliability organizing concepts, a special duo were featured the fourth and final day. Robert Keegan and Lisa Leahy of the Harvard University Graduate School facilitated their unique Immunity to Change commitment exercise. Nationally recognized organizational psychologists and authors, Keegan and Leahy walked the workshop participants through this challenging pursuit. We would like to um, basically remind you of this reality that often happens in really good conferences, which is that people get really pumped up to do things differently. If it's really good, if it's worthwhile, you've been introduced to a set of ideas that are new. You can see how they're going to be applicable. You can see how they can get you to a new place. And then, OK, then you leave, and now you have to go do something, right? And in many cases, the best of um, conferences lead to, well, there's just, it's like you don't have that same energy when you go back. And a week later, it's like, OK, how are we going to find you know, a way to make this happen? And that's why we want to be focusing right this morning on how to increase the likelihood that you're going to really be able to take this back. What we want to be doing this morning is putting a tool in your hand and giving you a chance to learn it through your own experience that's going to allow you to see one of the forces that we think actually um, keeps change from happening. And so what Bob is going to do in a moment, I'm going to turn things over to him, is he's going to lead you through a structured exercise this morning. So we're not going to be doing a lot of talking to you. Um, as was said earlier, this is going to be like a lot of work. Uh, and, and it's going to be up to you um, to really do a kind of delving into what is really important to you. And we're going to um, give you a chance to have a window into what what could be one of the sources that if you see more clearly what may keep you from um, exercising the change you want to, you're going to be in a better position to actually make it happen. Good morning to you all. And, and listening, to, <clears throat> listening to Lisa, I'm reminded of, uh, of an old math problem that you might be familiar with. If seven frogs sat on a log and four of them decided to jump into the water, how many frogs would be left on the log? And the answer is seven, because there's a big difference between deciding and actually doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that, it's that big gap, basically, that we're going to have a chance to, to explore uh, through, as Lisa said, giving you a kind of tool that uh, hopefully we will be building together because in the end what we need is a custom designed version of this tool. You each need your own version kind of of, of this tool. So we're going to actually have this be really like a workshop. You're actually going to build something, make something that will hopefully be useful to you in closing the gap between the good intentions that can come out of a, a high powered offsite conference and actually being able to uh, bring it about. We're going to need to be able to see more deeply into what are some of the, the complexities and sort of field forces that we're needing to contend with in order to move from intention to uh, real execution. So what each of you is going to be kind of crafting is a, is a lens that helps you see more deeply into that circumstance and then not only see it better, but be able now to engage a number of these, of these dimensions which might otherwise have been 
kind of invisible. We mean for this to be a very direct, almost seamless link to what you have been doing uh, and to kind of put some uh, STP into the, into the tank here to kind of uh, help the change processes that you're hoping for. Whatever you're going to enter then in your commitment column, drawn from your leftmost column, should feel like it's really true for you, that you actually do hold this commitment. You yourself really do want to see whether you can't bring about more of this. Uh, it's not just something your mother would be proud to hear about or that somebody else would like, but that it really comes from you. It feels like your own. Uh, the second is that it's clear to you that the way you're framing this commitment implicates you. It's not really ultimately about, well, if everybody else would just shape up, I would have this commitment accomplished, okay? So you have to be clear. I see you get what I'm saying here. You have to be clear how it puts you on the hook. And in this process, by the way, we've, we've learned that the, the people in the, the, that when you're in the listening role, you can serve a very, very important function here. That is by checking against these same criteria as a listener. So when you're listening to what your partner tells you, do you get it how this commitment implicates him or her? And the, the next one is that uh, clearly then there should be room for improvement. This commitment that you're naming is not something that if you, you know, that you'd give yourself a, you know, a 95 percentile ranking on. It's a, it's, remember we said it was something you thought would probably be hard for you, so it should turn out that you feel there's kind of a, a gap between what your current capacity to deliver on this commitment is and what you would want it to be. And the last one is that the commitment that you come up with feels very important to you. It would really make a difference that if you were to learn something, even before we go to lunch, about how to have qualitatively greater traction on this commitment, that would make that would be a big deal because the commitment is important to you. Imagine that you were to call together a group of a small group of people who know you really well in the context of your work for a perhaps unusual purpose, which I am about to describe. You are asking these people to give some thought to the following question before they come to this little meeting with you. And the question is, if they were to just look you straight in the eye and just name in 30 seconds or less what they think would be the most optimal area for your own performance enhancement, the thing that they think if you could get better at this, what they, what they were thinking would make the biggest difference to your being able to add more value to your setting, maybe especially as it applies to helping it become a more uh, high reliability organization. Keeping in mind that these people have no intention to hurt you. They're not, they're not saying what they're saying to do anything but be helpful and respond to this unusual request that you have made of them. So now you have two commitments in your commitment column. And uh, I want you to just circle the one which if you could learn something in the next couple hours about how to have dramatic improvement on that commitment, which is the one you'd like to focus on now for the rest of the morning. Keeping in mind, first of all, they might be the same, so you have no problem. Uh, but also keeping in mind that the one you don't circle uh, it doesn't have to be utterly ignored. You can use the, use the tool you're going to build here uh, in application to that one also on your own time. But right now we're going to pick which of these two is the one you want to focus on here for the rest of the morning and build your tool around. The purpose of this inquiry is not to embarrass us. It's not to make it all our fault. We're going to see that if we're willing to dig down a little bit into the bedrock that surrounds the commitment, we're going to learn a little bit more about why it is so difficult to move from intention to execution. So the, the, the more you're willing to tell on yourself and be you know, just very, very honest about the things I do or imagine I'll do that work against this, the things that I won't do or don't do that work against this, the more powerful kind of tool you're going to create for yourself.
these first two big steps we've taken, identifying a clearer goal that really personalizes what moving toward HRO would mean for you, and then identifying some of the barriers or things that would get in the way, should be not all that unfamiliar steps. I mean, in, in most kinds of improvement processes, individually or organizationally, we've got to get clear about the goal. We've got to get clear about the barriers to the goal. What generally follows from that is plans, or our plans and strategies, to eliminate these barriers. And uh, we call these the equivalent of New Year's resolutions in the work context. And the reason we call them New Year's resolutions is that they have the two most familiar features of New Year's resolutions. The first is that they are sincere. You know, when I resolve to exercise more or call my mother in Minnesota, uh, I really mean it. You know, and any of those things we resolve around New Year's, we really mean. So sincerity is a clear feature of any plans you would come up with to eliminate those second column barriers so you could better realize your first column commitment. The other very common feature of New Year's resolutions, I probably don't have to tell you, is, yeah, exactly, you know, really insufficient, unspectacular results for most people. We're going to do something that might seem very odd. We are not going to move next to good strategic plans for eliminating the barriers. That's what you've been doing. Rather, we're going to actually invent a different kind of tool or technology that is hopefully going to move us beyond just the sincere intentions to eliminate these barriers, the New Year's resolutions, and actually enable us to bring about more of what we intend. Now we come to kind of the biggest leap of the morning and the thing which, if we are successful, is going to turn this process uh, from sort of a kind of semi-dutiful uh, filling in of columns to actually beginning to get a picture of something uh, that is uh, more kind of alive on the page and, and uh, not just a set of entries, but that the whole thing starts to come into view a little bit like uh, when you're uh, developing a photograph in a dark room, uh, that moment where the uh, contact paper starts to show you a kind of picture. And that picture that we're looking for is a, is a, 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 a deeper seeing into uh, some of the, the kind of forces that can make it hard for us to actually bring about what we intend and what we might leave a workshop like this one hoping for. We have found, though, with a little work uh, and help from our partners, that uh, we can usually get enough of a grasp of this, even in a first try, to begin to get a, a hold of kind of the bigger ideas that we're going for here. Most people find that something of much greater power uh, results when we can take a more active relationship to the worry. That is, to consider the possibility I might not just have this concern. I might actually have a kind of commitment to trying to make absolutely sure that that thing I'm worried about does not occur. Okay? The kind of commitment we're trying to go for next is a commitment to preventing the thing that you're worried about. The purpose of this is not just to gaze at our navels and kind of think about ourselves, but actually, as we're going to see before we're done, to have a more powerful tool for actually not just intending what's in that first column, but actually bringing it about. And this is not an easy thing to do, because you are actually trying to move something from invisible to visible. You're naming a kind of commitment that might be powerfully at work for you that you haven't been all that aware of up till now. So what we're getting a picture of here is a dynamic equilibrium, a system, a kind of contradictory system. We call it an immune system because it creates a kind of immunity to change. And it is overcoming that immunity that we think will be one of the things that would best equip you to actually move from an intention to bringing it about. We use the metaphor of immunity quite intentionally to evoke the notions that an immune system is a powerful system at work in nature that is beautiful and that most of the time exists 
to save our lives. But sometimes an immune system, by its rejection of, of tissue or content externally or internally, will put us at great risk. Our immune systems most of the time work beautifully. The immune system you're getting a glimpse of is working beautifully for you. You are all successful people. And in part, your success has been accomplished with this immune system. It, it works very well on behalf of a whole host of intentions and desires. But what we're coming to is the way that that immune system might actually have some limitations with respect to bringing about more of what you're hoping for. So our big assumptions give us a very deceiving sense of certainty that this is how the world is. And we each hold some big assumption that keeps this whole immune system in place. We've come to the end of our uh, part of the day with you, but we can't end without, you know, first of all, thanking you for your willingness to kind of share at this level with, uh, you know, complete strangers, I think Lisa and I are for most of you uh, strangers, your willingness to kind of share your work and, uh, you know, dig into kind of the bedrock here, and that hopefully you see how um, this uh, is potentially a kind of support to Carl and Kathleen's good ideas uh, about a high reliability in ways that you can have, take from the conference not only these kinds of intentions, but maybe also uh, a kind of a tool that can help you see some of the more often hidden dimensions that will work against your caring forward in these intentions. Mm -hmm.